So welcome to this brief introduction to the art of storyboards. My name is Alex Williams. I'm the head of animation here at Escape Studios, and I'll be talking about storyboards in general for a, a brief introduction, and then I'll be showing Redboard, which is an excellent new piece of software uh, which can be used to create storyboards, help speed up the storyboard process. It's a kind of hybrid technology between storyboards and previs. So let's go back to the 1930s, to the Disney studio. The image here is uh, of Walt Disney being pitched to by Bill Peet, who was one of Disney's great storyboard artists. And you can just see here that he's actually pitching boards from Dumbo, which is one of the films that Bill Peet um, storyboarded. The, this picture is taken from Peet's autobiography, which is a fascinating insight into the Disney studio at the time. And we still do storyboards in pretty much the same way that it was done back then. Here's a storyboard pitch from uh, Pixar to a group of Pixar artists. You can see these um, boards have been, uh, or really the drawings have been pinned up on storyboard panels and the storyboard artist is pitching them to uh, the assembled company. And so what, what goes into storyboards? There are three rain, main elements that you have to think about. The first is camera. What sort of shot is it? Is it a wide shot? A medium shot? Is it, is it a close-up? You know, wh what's going on? Or what's the sequence of shots? So you under, need to have a good understanding of cinematography. You need to understand what the action is, what's actually happening in the shot. Um, and of course the emotion, especially in, in animation boards, what are the characters thinking and feeling? And how do we um, can convey that as storyboard artists? And animation is really a lot like uh, silent film acting from the old silent, mill, silent film days. It's really about overacting. Uh, and the old actors, people like um, Charlie Chaplin and Buster Keaton, uh, they acted for the back row because they came from vaudeville. They came from um, the, the stage. Uh, and nowadays, of course, mime and pantomime artists will sort of do the same thing. They act without words. We want our animation to be clear. We want our storyboards to be very, very clear. And if you're pitching to a room full of executives, it needs to be clear for the guys in the back row. It needs to be super clear. So let's think about the differences between different kinds of boards. There are basically four different kinds of boards. There's animated feature film boards, live action film boards, TV animation boards, and advertising boards. Now we're primarily concerned with TV animation boards and to some degree feature film boards, but Redboard uh, to date has been used mainly for TV animation, so we'll be focusing on that specifically. So TV boards tend to be comedies. That's not always the case. There, there are dramas out there, but for the most part, it's comedies. It needs to be funny. It needs to be clear. It needs to be crisp. And the boards that you're doing as a storyboard artist um, have to be done very quickly because TV has terrifying deadlines. Uh, and generally speaking, as a board artist, you are expected to board the script. Um, you, you, you can add some stuff. But, or, or even take stuff away, but this has to be done with permission, and really you're, you're pretty much just boarding the script. Um, in essence, your job, um, as the panel says here, is to put the, fit, the, the script in visual form so that the contract studio knows what needs to be done. Who's the contract studio? That's the studio that's going to do the animation. Typically nowadays, um, that's often done in South Asia or East Asia. Uh, so your boards have to be super clear so that they understand what to do. Now often, well, uh, you ought to have, as a board artist, you ought to have a, a, an animation bible which will have the backgrounds, the scenes, the props, the characters, the character designs, uh, so that you can get everything accurate um, and not make any mistakes. Um, when you're talking about TV boards, um, you're often thinking in terms of a three camera system, much as they have on, on TV for, for, for TV shows. Uh, basically, wide shot, medium shots, and close-ups. Um, now, you've got to manage your time well, um, because, as I said, the deadlines have come fast and furious. So have a think. Let's say you get three to four pages of a script. How much time do you think you would get to board that on a TV show? The answer is two days, maximum a week. It really depends on the complexity of the script pages, but you're not going to get much more time than that. Will you get the chance to redo it? Anyone who's experienced with TV boards will be chuckling at the, this point. The answer, of course, is no. You've got to do it. You've got to nail it first time. Uh, and studios want board artists who are confident and fast and don't tend to make too many mistakes. Now, feature animation boards are a little bit different. Feature animation, uh, feature animation boards tend to 
really drive the production. It's really in the storyboarding that you really, really make the, the movie. So that you, you, you will begin with a script, but that is only a starting point. Uh, the editor and the storyboard artist and the director will work very closely together, um, uh, working boards and reworking them and redoing them, frankly. Uh, and, and you are going to end up redoing it. Um, John Laster always says it's not about storyboarding, it's about story reboarding. Um, and Barry Cook, director of Milan, says that um, it's like an actor rehearsing. And you're rehearsing and you're rehearsing and you're rehearsing and then finally you have opening night. And that's when you can no longer keep tweaking the storyboards. So how, have a think, how much time, let's take the same three to four pages of a script, how much would you get to board that on a feature film? It's a completely different beast. You're going to get two weeks to a month. Uh, will you get the chance to redo it? The answer is probably yes. Uh, because, um, uh, as I said, feature film boards are really about reworking it, except on super low budget features, of course, where it's more like TV. Um, so what kinds of boards are there? There's live action feature boards. Now, what, these tend to be more about the cinematography, the shot continuity, less about character expressions, less about um, character storytelling. But it's quite similar to feature animation boards. Advertising boards are a different beast. Here you're really trying to sell the project to the client. You want the client to feel comfortable. These are some uh, boards for Pillsbury um, uh, baked goods. And obviously, you, the, you're getting much more into pretty pictures here, much more time over these boards. They're almost illustrations. You could almost frame them and put them on the wall. Here's one for Cheerios. Same kind of idea. The pack has to look beautiful. The product has to look great. Uh, it's all about making the client feel comfortable with what's going on. Um, so now, the, clear, the, the most important thing with, with, with storyboards is you want to make things clear. Uh, that means the drawings have to be clear. We have to know what character we're looking at. Uh, it can't be confusing. Um, we need to, we, the, the continuity needs to be clear from one board to another. The cinematography needs to be clear. And the emotions of the characters need to be clear. What is the character thinking and feeling? This is super important. Now, common mistakes. Uh, one of the most common mistakes is trying to draw everything. Um, you can't, you know, you're not, you're not producing a work of art here. Um, uh, you're, you're, you're just trying to sketch something out, give a sense of the motion, give a sense of what's happening. You've got to do it quickly. Uh, you don't want to spend too much time on individual panels because you'll run out of time. Uh, and you don't necessarily need a, a, a pose for every single phrase. In a, if, you, if, you, if you're animating a line of dialogue, um, you, you can keep it quite simple. You can have a minimal number of phrases, especially if you're not certain that the boards will get approved. Um, unclear expressions, another, another uh, common pitfall. It's got to be clear to the audience what the character is thinking and feeling. Uh, another common mistake is to have both, if you've got a two-character shop, have, have both of them acting at the same time. Try and concentrate on one character at once, because the audience can only look at one character at a time. Um, in terms of pitching your boards, um, obviously you do want to pitch your boards in, 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 in real time. You want to, you, if, it, if it's a, an action sequence, you're going to pitch them super fast. If it's a, a slow uh, sequence, you might um, pitch it slower. Uh, pitching boards is really all about being an actor, getting into it. If you watch some of the Pixar storyboarding videos at YouTube, you'll see the Pixar animators, they're acting out all the roles. They're, they're, they're playing the characters themselves. They're doing the voices. And that's because storyboard artists are kind of actors. You're, you're, sort of, you're, you're, you're getting into the role. Uh, what you don't want to be doing ever is saying, this is what's supposed to be happening in this panel. If it isn't clear, you need to redraw it. Um, technology, Toon Boom Storyboard Pro is commonly used now in the industry. Uh, and using the Wacom Cintiq or, or perhaps new the um, iPad Pro, which I haven't had a chance to take a look at. Um, and uh, Redboard, made uh, right here in London by Hibbert Ralph Animation, uh, which is some really nice pre software. Uh, it's a really nice piece of technology uh, that we uh, are supporting here at Escape Studios. And we, we like it because it's, uh, it allows storyboard artists to work faster and more efficiently by using low-poly 3D assets to speed up their work. So it's kind of like a hybrid between previs and storyboards. Uh, and basically, the, the, what you do is to get started with, story, with, with Redboard is you import 
low-res 3D models and sets into your shot uh, and then set up the camera, set up the boards and then you sketch over the top of the 3D asset so it's a, it's a lot more like um, it, the sketching part is like traditional storyboards but obviously the, the 3D part is, is more like previs or digital layout. Um, there's also a blog post about it here at our Escape Studios animation blog and we did a, a webinar on it um, uh, where we had some issues with the sound quality so this video hopefully will have a better quality of sound. Um, so who uses Redboard? So Redboard is used mainly by TV studios, especially places like Blue Zoo Animation. And they like it because you don't get this really big gap between story and 3D layout. So in a, in a traditional 3D pipeline, when the 3D layout comes back from the um, contracting studio, you often have to fix a lot because there wasn't enough information in the storyboard panels for the 3D layout artists really to get the camera and the set right. Uh, and what Redboard allows you to do is once you've got everything set up, you export your models directly into Maya. And this gives you automatically a 3D layout rough pass. So it's a really, really nice piece of technology. Okay, so let's go and open up Redboard and take a look. Here's the shortcut on my desktop, which I'm going to double click on and load up Redboard. So here's what happens. I will be invited to load this file, this RPF file windmill. And I'm going to click on that and select open. And this will now open up my Redboard uh, software. Now when you first open Redboard, you find yourself in browse mode. And here is a, a, a shot. Uh, this, and you can see that this is episode from, from, from the windmill scene, which is the sample scene that comes with Redboard. This is episode four, scene one, shot one, uh, or, or rather shot 10, version one, panel one. So you can see there's a whole hierarchy of panels, versions, shots, scenes, and episodes. Um, and you can see the action listed here from the script. Mabel has just shut the door. Now to load the actual storyboard panel, what we would do is click on this button here, load panel, and that will load up the storyboard panel so we can go in and edit it. And the first thing we want to do is get used to the cameras, because this is really the heart of Redboard. So if I click here on the camera button, it's all very straightforward. It's all designed to be easy for um, non-techie storyboard artists to operate. Um, and if I now go, I can go to these various presets. So I can click on the top view, which will give me a view of the entire set. You can see we've got a little town here, uh, a windmill, a beach, uh, uh, um, and uh, the ocean. Uh, the yard will take me to this yard area here, windmill will take me here, street, obviously, cave, beach, barn, and so on. So I'm going to go back to uh, the yard um, and show you how the camera tools work. Now you've got various ways of uh, running your camera, um, and you've got two camera options here, walk and fly, and they could equally well be described as slow and fast. Walk is when you just want to uh, walk around the area you're in, and fly is when you, when you want to go faster. So I'm going to click on walk for now. And you see it helpfully gives you a list of options. Um, uh, so you know where the main uh, buttons are located. So let's start with the arrow keys. And these allow you to um, dolly. So if I use the up arrow key, whoops, just make sure I've got this selected. There we go. So up uh, allows me to, um, uh, to zoom in, and the down key allows me to zoom out. And then the left and right keys allow me to dolly from side to side. You also have the, the brackets, the square brackets keys, which allow you to crane. I'm using right square bracket now. That now allows me to crane up. And left square bracket allows me to crane down. And I can also use the, um, uh, the left mouse button, which I'm using now, uh, to move from side to side. So if you use those different um, keys, you should find it very easy to navigate the scene. Obviously, it takes a little bit of time to, um, to get used to it, but it isn't tough to, to get used to this system. So let's do a storyboard panel. So let's go back to panels. Um, and let's say we're in, let's, let's, let's try, let's create an entirely new episode. Episode 11. 
uh, scene one, shot 10, version one, panel one. Uh, and then click on save panel. It doesn't exist yet, do you wish to create it? And the answer is yes. So it will now create an entirely new episode for us. So let's now, um, let's now zoom in. Uh, if I can just make this, so go to camera, uh, walk, let's zoom in a bit, and let's um, set up our shot. Now let's say we're happy with this as, a, as an establishing shot for our first um, scene. You gen as a general rule in Redboard, you want to do a camera pass first, uh, and then go back and do the drawings later. Uh, but just to demo this in a reasonable amount of time, we'll just do this on, on one um, panel. So I'm going to go to models, and I'm going to find the stuff that I want. And now uh, it looks like we've already got Peter and Mabel in this set. I'm going to go on. I'm going to go and click on add model here, and that will take us to a whole series of different options. Now we're outside a garage, so I'm going to want the car. So I'm going to go add model to current set, and now immediately I get the option to place the car uh, in the tree. No, we don't want that. So uh, to place the car in the scene. And as soon as I click on my Wacom tablet, or if I was using a mouse on my mouse pad, I get the option to place it and then to turn it. And when I release, the model is in the set. And if I hit enter, uh, it's now, the, the car is now in the set. And I can go back and add some characters by simply clicking on add model again. Go back, let's select Ethel, add model to current set. So let's say that maybe Ethel uh, is having an argument about the car. So let's turn her over there. Add model with Fred. And let's say Fred's standing there. So they're kind of facing each other. And we're in a hostile situation. Press enter. And now we've got our basic characters imported into the shot. So you can see how easy it is to pull your geometry in um, and now you don't have to do a whole bunch of complex drawing. You've got your basic characters there. So now all we really need to do is to start to think about uh, character poses and facial expressions. So to do that, all we need to do is click on our paint button because now we're going to start doing some painting. Could equally called, be called the draw button. And now you get some, uh, some brushes. So you can use a small brush or a big brush. You can select the brush color and so on. Uh, so let's try with the small brush and let's, 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 uh, now I don't have any model sheets here, but let's try, let's have a grumpy Ethel who's annoyed with her husband because he's going off to play football with his friends and he didn't tell her about it, so she's going to be all angry about it here. So you can see all we have to do is kind of drop is, is draw over the storyboard panels, uh, sorry, over the 3D assets, and, and you get a kind of, um, the, 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 you start to get more of the feeling of a storyboard. So let's, 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 let's have Fred look kind of worried here. Fred's in trouble now. You are so in trouble, Fred. Okay, so let's just have them just kind of look a little bit worried. Oh dear. My football plans are now in trouble. Um, and we can also get some kind of auto drawing going on here um, because you can you can you can get the uh, the the model will, will Redboard will do a free uh, drawing of the model for you. So if we go back and click on models, let's say we want the car, so we select the car there, unselect Fred, and uh, just click on the auto sketch. Hold on, you probably can't see that. Let me just pull that up so that it's more in your view. If I click on auto sketch down here, the car will now automatically draw in. Now that creates some problems for us because we've now got um, the car drawn on top of um, Fred there. So what I probably should have done, well, if I go back to the paint tool um, and go back to uh, let's see, if I go back to Erase, uh, this tool, sometimes I need to, nope, I'm still in Draw. 
Come on, array. There we go. Um, so now I can go back and kind of erase around. So I probably I probably have to do Fred over again. Um, oh, and the undo. If you want to press undo button, by the way, uh, there it is. And we can also make the arrays smaller. So I can go back and kind of do this in a fine way. There we go. And erase these points there. So what this does, so what you can see is that you get this kind of auto drawing for free, uh, which you can then go and erase around uh, so it doesn't kind of get in the way of your character. If I'd been smart, I'd have done the car first and then uh, drawn Fred on top. Um, but it does, it means that you're not having to do a bunch of uh, slow and complicated drawings um, and you're, you're, sa you're basically saving an awful lot of time as a storyboard artist. Now you can create as many panels as you want this way and as I said the trick is really just set up your camera from the beginning so you get all the shots figured out and then go in and story do, do, do your uh, drawings as you would in a normal storyboard sequence. When you're done you go to save panel uh, and then when you want to export, you simply go back to browse and then uh, find export there. And that will export your data into, directly into Maya, creates Maya mill scripts. You can open these up in Maya uh, and um, you've got your, your rough layout passed. Now this doesn't work for the demo version of Redboard for obvious reasons because it's a, it's a production support tool. Uh, but you can get a free version of Redboard in order to practice your skills and learn how this excellent piece of software works. So thanks for listening. That's a brief introduction to Redboard. If you go to their website, you can find um, some more detailed videos um, which go into more detail um, into uh, how specifically Redboard works. So I encourage you to go and watch those as well. Thanks for listening. Once again, my name is Alex Williams. I'm the head of animation here at Escape Studios. And um, uh, thanks for watching our, our Redboard storyboard previous software demonstration.